Hello everybody and welcome to this lesson from Miss Douglas Classroom. Today we're going to be looking at English Language Paper 1. This is the CIE IGCSE and we're going to be doing question 2D. So let's have a closer look at what we are doing today. Like I said, we are doing 2D, so it's this one down here. Now, as I said in the first lesson of this series, which was on 1F, the summary question, I'm not going to be doing the comprehension or short answer questions, I'm just going to be doing the bigger questions. So we're skipping this one from right here and we're going down to the language task here. So this is 2D. So for the language task, you need to obviously read the question. You need to then reread the specified paragraphs. You need to select your examples and then you need to write up your response. So you need to do all of that in 25 minutes. But the good thing about this is that you have already read text C. So at this point in the exam, you will have read text C because you will have needed it to do your response to these questions up here. So you'll already have a good understanding of what the text is about. Um, what happens in the text, what the tone is, who is involved, what happens to them or what they're doing. So all of that knowledge will already have been gleaned from the text and you'll just then be looking at the two paragraphs that the question has specified. So what do you have to do? So you have to make sure that you're making good choices. That means selecting powerful words and phrases. You've got to discuss the connotations of words. So this is a language question. It's all about how language works. So you, make, you have to make sure that you understand the words that you are commenting on. You understand what they mean, but then you understand why they've been used, what they suggest, what they imply. You need to be able to comment on how imagery is created, so what kind of image is created by the words, the language that is used. You must comment on the intended effect of the language choices, so what do you think the writer is trying to get across to you, and again having a good understanding of the overall text will help you with that. You need to consider how the example that you chose helps to convey to the tone, a mood, atmosphere, feelings, um, anything really to do with what's happening. How does the language help you to understand that? And finally, you've got to make sure that you're linking everything back to what is being described in the paragraph and the text as a whole. So, so do not take it out of context. This question is about language, but it's about language in context. So um, you're not really gonna get any marks for just talking about what a word might mean generally. You've got to think, okay, what does this word mean? But how has it been used in this particular paragraph to tell me something about this person or to tell me something about a jungle or to tell me something about an animal? So how has it been used in context? And when I talk about imagery, imagery really is anything that stands out to you. Any unusual words or phrases, any interesting words or phrases, anything that really puts that image, that picture in your mind. So there are um, several steps for this question. Some of them are very, very short. Some of them are a little bit longer. So you want to try and think about giving yourself around 10 minutes to go through the steps. All of these steps will kind of lead you up to the point of where you then have enough information, enough understanding to write up your response. So the first thing that you do is you read the question, think about your focus. Then you look at the paragraphs that they've specified you must focus on. Do circle them um, on the text. This just makes sure that you don't get confused and then just pick um, evidence from a different paragraph. If you do, you won't get any marks for that. As you're doing that, just remind yourself of what is happening in each paragraph. If you want to make some notes, you can do. Um, again, you will know what this text is about, but for this question, you're zooming in on two specific paragraphs. So just kind of go back over what's happening, what is the tone, um, does this tone shift from paragraph to paragraph, are they describing different things, um, is there a particular angle um, that this writer is, is kind of coming from. Then think about your overview statements. Now, in order to answer the question, you do need to have an overview statement, um, just very, very short, just tells you what the paragraph is about or what's happening or what the focus of that particular paragraph is, what the tone is. Um, think about what the writer is trying to show you, what they're trying to achieve with this paragraph. So it's probably a good idea to write your overview statements at this point because this is where you're just focusing on understanding the paragraph itself before you then go and find your um, language choices. Once you've done that, underline anything interesting that creates imagery. So anything that stands out, anything you think, oh, that's not really how you would usually explain 
starting a fire for example if it's unusual or it stands out then it's probably going to be a good choice for you so underline anything first of all or highlight it with your highlighters if you have them and then once you've done that just have another look back so with fresh eyes think well, okay I've highlighted five or six things here I only need three which are the best three so the three that you can talk about the three that really have um, convey imagery that have interesting words in there that you can talk about and also the three that are relevant to the question then think about what you can say about each now it would be a really good idea to you for you to make notes around your choices if you make notes on the text itself this will save you having to then do a separate plan later on so just make as many notes as you can think about what is shown to me um, through this choice I've just highlighted what are the connotations of the words that stand out what's suggested or implied by these words or by the language that's been chosen and what image is created for the reader why is it been created Created, what's the effect and when you're doing this when you're making these notes you can link everything back to the notes that you made for step three so the overview statement is not just there for the examiners the overview statement is actually there to help you and I will show you how you can utilize your overview statement as you go through your notes and also as you write up your answer so let's have a look at how you make good choices so trying to get the maximum amount of marks here does rely on your ability to pick good choices first of all if you don't make a good choice you're not really going to have much to say about it so it does have a knock-on effect for the rest of your answer so questions to ask yourself as you're going through the paragraph and you're thinking to yourself okay what am I going to choose here what am I going to highlight is it relevant so is it relevant to the question um, and I'll show you later on how you kind of figure that out so think about what your focus is in the question is that relevant to the focus how do you know it's relevant and this is where you really focus on the words the language is it imagery so does it create that image for you is it something that's unusual um, does the writer use words that maybe you would not usually associate with that particular thing then consider which part of the sentence do you need and for this you want to really stay clear of selecting double examples and a double example is where you pick quite a long phrase and you want to talk about the entire phrase but actually you've got two examples of imagery in there and rather than talk about everything um, in one go you could have split it in two and therefore saved yourself a little bit of work so do have a look and think about okay which part of this sentence do I need you just can take fragments you don't need to take an entire sentence um, and do just be wary of it or the two examples of imagery here okay I'm gonna split them in two and I'm going to use both of them separately then once you have made your choice so once you've decided on the choices in the paragraphs highlight the key word in that in that quotation or in that phrase so there will be something in there that really creates that image so sometimes it's one word sometimes it's two and then think about how you would define them what do they mean then you want to analyze them and think about what they mean within the context, what they make you think of, what they suggest to you, think about why they've been used, how they help to create the atmosphere, how they link to the overall text. So let's go through the steps for this question. So this is a past question. Um, it's a past question from the old syllabus. Um, I've just tweaked it and tailored it so it fits the new one. So let's have a look. Reread paragraphs three and five. So now we know what we're looking for. So the first thing that you should now do is you should read the question, think about your focus, but also circle the paragraphs that you need. So go to, back to the text and circle them just to keep yourself focused. So the question itself, reread the descriptions of A, the intense cold in paragraph three, beginning, he had set off. So it will tell you the beginning of that paragraph, just um, in case you're a little bit too nervous to count them. B, the lighting of the fire in paragraph five, beginning, it is possible, it is impossible. And my top tip here is you will be given clues about the fo about what the focus is in the question. Uh, this is going to help you to make your choices as well as explain them. So just highlight them. 
um, or underline them or even just write them down um, on, on, on the text itself so you can think about okay my focus for paragraph three is in the intense cold so I'm trying to find examples that are all about the intense cold and my focus for paragraph five is the lighting of the fire so I'm only picking things about the lighting of the fire so not only does that already say ah okay so that's what the paragraph is about so it gives you a little helping hand if, if you've struggled to really try and think about overall what that paragraph is showing you but it also helps you to be more specific so you now know that you're only picking examples and um, about the intense cold or about lighting the fire and that helps you when you're trying to select your examples of imagery and the rest of the question is explain how the writer uses language to convey meaning and to create an effect in these paragraphs so again do you understand the language and then do you understand why it's been used what the effect is what you are shown Choose three examples of words or phrases from each paragraph to support your answer. Your choices should include the use of imagery. Okay, so they're very clear on that. Um, and I've already been through um, just to make sure that you have picked something that's unusual, that stands out, that creates this image for the reader. Write about 200 to 300 words. So this is not a literature essay. Um, so remember, this is the language paper, so you're not expected to write an essay. And you get 15 marks. So this is the full text of the paper that I have used for today. Um, no, I'm not going to read it through because actually we only need um, the paragraphs that I've circled. So I've done step two here. So I've circled the paragraphs that they've said in their question just so I can be focused. Um, if you do want to read through the entire text just so that you understand what I'm talking about for the rest of this tutorial, then please pause the video now and have a bit of a read. Okay, so we've done step one and we're now, we've done step two, we've circled them and we're now on to the overview statement. So your overview statement is short, succinct and it just gives a very quick overview of what's happening in that paragraph, what the focus of that paragraph is. Now don't forget that the question itself has given us a bit of a clue of what the focus is, but we're not really going to just repeat that. We're going to try and add something to show that we've really understood it. Think about the tone or the atmosphere, think about the effect on the reader or think about what the writer is trying to show you, what are they trying to achieve overall, um, what is the point of this paragraph, what do you get from it. So these are my overview statements, so hopefully at this point you have read the text, if you haven't at least read through these two paragraphs um, from the text just so that you again understand um, and you can slot everything together as I'm going through it. So this is paragraph 3 and this is paragraph 5, I've just taken them out of the text just so that we can make it a bit bigger and we can read it. So my overview for paragraph 3 is quite simple. This paragraph is about the intense effects of the cold and the subsequent pain caused. We see the way in which Tom struggles to keep warm against the extreme cold. Now what's important here is that I've also used words and phrases that I can refer back to when I write up my answer. So when I'm writing up my answer and when I'm picking imagery, I can think, oh gosh, what does this imagery show? And I can just go back to this and think, okay, does my imagery show the intense effects of the cold? Does it show something about pain? Does it show something about Tom's struggle? Does it show something about the extreme cold? So if you have a good overview um, and you've kind of followed these steps to try and think about what the paragraph does, then actually your overview will be very helpful to you when you come to write up your answer. So my overview for paragraph five here is, the paragraph describes the fragile nature of the fire as well as the delicate and focused efforts needed to keep it going. So not only am I saying what's happening in each paragraph, but I've also understood the tone. Look at the, the language that I've used. I've used fragile, delicate, and that's quite different to, to this paragraph. Here I've got intense, I've got extreme, I've got pain. So you can actually see that the tone is very, very different across these two paragraphs and that really will be helpful later on when I start to write up my answer. Okay, so now we are on step four, which is where you go through and underline anything interesting that creates imagery. So top tip here is do keep checking the question over here and your overview as you're making your choices because it will keep you focused. Now when you're when you're writing these up, so obviously these will go on your um, answer paper, so what you could do is as you're writing them, you could even write them down on the scrap paper before you start writing up your actual answer, or you could write them down, you could write your first one down and you could leave a big gap, and then you could 
write your second one down. It's completely up to you, but it is a good idea to have them written down somewhere before you start to go through and pick um, out your choices. So as you can see here, I've gone through and I've picked more than I need. I only need three, um, and in some cases I've picked twice as much, a little bit more than that. So what I did is I went through and I just thought, okay, what stands out for me? And I'm just going to talk you through a few of my choices, not every single one, but just a few so that you understand my thought process. So as we go through, we have got lots of well, lots of interesting things here. Now, this idea of fishing out a biscuit. Now, that is imagery. That does stand out. That's unusual that you're fishing out a biscuit. And initially, I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to choose that. And then I actually went back to the question. I thought, let me just double check before I, I choose it. And here we've got, we read the descriptions of the intense cold in paragraph three. Now, it's not about the intense cold. So then I decided I'm not going to choose that and I'm going to keep on going and see what else I can find that's to do with the intense cold. And so the first one that I got to was this numbing fingers. And notice how short my selections are. I've only picked the part of that sentence that I think I need. I don't need the rest. I don't need this bit about he had barely chewed the first mouthful. I don't need the fact that he put his mitten back on again. That's my imagery. Uh, that's just an action. But this idea of numbing fingers is imagery. And I also picked it because I think, all right, I already know what this means. I already understand what the writer is trying to show me about just how cold it is. And the word that I think I would zoom in on, the word that I think I could really analyze is numbing. So I already know what stands out for me. And then we, the next one I chose was this idea of the frost had bitten. Uh, now obviously that's personification. There isn't really a requirement within the mark scheme for you to select um, name techniques. Um, I would only suggest that you do so if you feel you can talk about it. Just to say this is personification doesn't really add anything. Um, you could even still talk about the word bitten without mentioning personification. Uh, but if you are going to mention um, a technique, do make sure that it's relevant um, and that it aids your analysis. It's not just um, something that you've tagged on. Uh, but this idea of the frost had bitten, in my mind, I have this idea of something physical biting his arm um, or biting a part of his body. So, so that definitely is imagery. It does stand out. And so you can just have a look at all the different selections that I've made. If you want to pause the video and just have a look down here as well, and you can just understand why I've picked them, what the imagery is, what the interesting language is. I um, mean, it's always a good idea to, to try and figure out for yourself what do you understand imagery to be? What do you understand a good choice to be before you start selecting them? Okay, so then... Step five is to go back and then tick the best three in each paragraph. Now, the best three in each paragraph will depend on how much you understand the choices that you've highlighted. So you may have just gone through and highlighted anything that stands out. And then on closer inspection, you've realized that actually you only understand maybe four. Um, but also when you're picking the best examples, you're also thinking about the ones that you can say the most about. So ask yourself when you're going back through and you're, you're making your decision, so you can see I've picked my best three, and they may not be your best three, but they are my best three. Have this little checklist to help you make your final decisions, because these are the ones that will go into your answer. Is it imagery? So does it convey something interesting or unusual, something I can imagine? Is it relevant to the question? Is it the correct part of the sentence? Um, so do just think about, well, like, have I picked the correct part of it? So again, if I'd picked this sentence, I thought, oh, this whole sentence is interesting. Oh, I'm going to pick barely chewed. That would not be the best part of the sentence. So the correct part of the sentence here is numbing fingers. Um, and can you talk about it? That's the most important thing. Can you talk about it? If you think, well, I like it, but I don't know what I would say, then just go to something else. Go to your next best choice. Okay, so now we are on to step six. So step six is where I recommend that you make some notes around your choices. So in, by doing this, this does save you a little bit of time. Uh, you don't need to make um, a plan elsewhere, but also it means that when you come to write up your response, all you need to do is look back at your notes and just put them into sentences. So just spend some time um, before um, you go to write your answer and after you've picked your final three, just brainstorming as many things as you can think of um, in terms of what, what is shown, what the connotations of the words are, um, what image is created, what is suggested, 
and all the time linking back to your overview and what you already know this paragraph to be about. So I've included some guiding questions over here. So think about what is shown to you, what is described for you, what is presented to you. So start off with that one. Start off with the easiest thing. Then you go to the language. What do the words mean? And I don't mean every single word. So as you can see here, you'll notice that what I've done is I've underlined the language that I think really creates that image. I've underlined the word that I think that I will really focus on and analyze. So just because I picked numbing fingers, now numbing fingers is a phrase, um, so I need to include the two words. If I just had numbing, that wouldn't make sense. Now I don't need the entire sentence, but I do need enough of the phrase um, so the meaning is clear when I copy it out into my answer. But actually fingers isn't very interesting, it's numbing that's interesting. Equally, frost had bitten, I need the full phrase, but not every word there is interesting. I'm not going to spend time analysing frost and then analysing had and then analysing bitten. I'm only going to analyse bitten. Same for miniature glacier. Uh, glacier is a very unusual thing to describe to be on somebody's face. Um, so that's what I will analyse, that's the imagery. So do spend some time, once you've selected your final choices, underline the word um, that you really think that you can zoom in on and you'll notice down here that I haven't um, underlined a single word here because I actually think these two words work together quite well. Nurturing obviously is the word that stands out the most but gently um, supports that word and it really gives it meaning so I think I would probably um, try and talk about those together rather than just zooming in on one but for everything else I've zoomed in on just one thing um, that I can really analyse. And then once I've done that, once I've underlined the focus, I've underlined the, the word that creates the image, then I've just made some very brief notes that I will then use to put into uh, sentences later on. So for numbing fingers, um, first of all, I think, okay, right, what is, what is shown to me? Shows that it's hard to move. So you imagine it in your head. Always try and do that. Take a second to think, okay, if somebody's fingers are numb, if I imagine that image in my head, what would that look like? If somebody said to me, oh look, my fingers are really, really numb, what does it mean? It, it means that you can't really move them. It means that they're very, very cold. Um, so it shows it's, it's hard to move them. There's a loss of warmth from the fingers. Um, and then I think about the image that's created and I think about what the words suggest or imply. And actually what I think this image is suggesting or implying is that the cold is taking over this person. and I got help um, in terms of, of, of me making that comment by just looking back up here and I thought, okay, what does it suggest? What does it imply? Oh wait, let me go and have a look at my overview. Now my overview mentions this idea of Tom struggling um, against the extreme cold. So I actually think that this, this idea of um, numbing fingers shows that maybe he's losing the struggle a little bit. Maybe the cold is taking over. So I've gone through my guiding questions here. Um, and I will do more of this when I write it up um, as a full answer. But really the, the, first, the first four are what will really help you here when you're going through and annotating on the text itself. So we'll just have a look at one more here. We'll go over to Glacier. So obviously Glacier is what stands out here. So if you imagine a glacier in your mind, you imagine this, um, this kind of huge um, wall of ice. So what we have here, what's being described to us is an icy landscape. Uh, what I think that it suggests or implies is that the ice is becoming a part of him. And I think about the image that's created. The image, that, in my mind, if I imagine a man and I imagine a very small glacier on his chin, it kind of shows me that his features are now matching those of the landscape around him. So that's what I think is created through that image. So I just went through these four steps and made a few notes. And we'll have a look at one from the second paragraph just before we move on. So I, I selected this nest of fire. So this paragraph again is all about the fragile nature of the fire. It's his very delicate efforts to try and keep it going. Obviously this is part of his survival. Um, but I thought it was very interesting to refer to fire as being a nest. So first of all I thought, okay, well, what, what is being described to me? Like what is a nest? So I always go back to that. What is this? Um, and a nest is a safe space for a newborn um, and it's the protection of something so it can grow. So then I think, alright, so that's what the words mean. Now what do the words suggest or imply and what image is created? And I think that they, they suggest or imply that this is alive, 
they they link to the idea of warmth but they also give this image of him being quite caring towards the fire um, so again just use the steps to just slowly work your way through just to make sure you've got enough notes because the more notes you have here the less work you're going to have to do um, for the next step so the next step, the final step, is writing up your answer. Now hopefully um, with enough practice you should be able to go through the previous steps in, in about 10 minutes. It should just be very, very quick. Highlight, 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 tick, tick, tick the ones that you want and then very, very quick notes. So you should have notes around six different examples across the two paragraphs. And then you want to spend 15 minutes writing up your answer. So this is how you should structure your answer. So this is my suggestion. So give your overview for your first paragraph. So I've already given my overviews, you've seen them. And then you have the quotation, so the first quotation. Then you use all of your notes and you just put them into sentences. Now you should have done your notes kind of in the order, if you've done them in the order that I've suggested. So just basically um, on the surface, what, what are you shown, what is presented to you, and then underneath the surface, what is implied or suggested. So just put all these notes together. So you explain the word or phrase, then you think about the effect, um, and you analyze the image created by focusing on the language, and then you try and link to the whole paragraph. And again, that's where your overview comes in. So you're showing how this particular phrase, this particular example, feeds into the rest of the paragraph. And so you'll want to do that three times. You've got an overview and then you've got all of your discussion of quotation one, then quotation two, then quotation three. And then you repeat the same thing for when you look at the second paragraph. So how are you um, going to ensure that you are successful here? So this is just a copy of the mark scheme. So I've just um, circled I'll put in a red box the bits that really stand out that you need to focus on if you're looking to get a level five. So this idea of judiciously selected language. So that's what I was talking to you about in terms of making good choices, the best choices that you can make, ensuring that there is imagery there. And then we've got this high quality comments that add meaning and association to words and phrases. So what does the word mean? Okay, so what is being shown to you? On a basic level, what does it mean? And then the associations of those words and phrases, and that's when you start to talk about the connotations and you think about what's being suggested or implied. Then demonstrate that you can understand the writer's reasons for using them. What is the effect? What do they show to you? What does that image reveal to you? And then we've got this tackling imagery with some precision. So understanding what creates the imagery. So like I said to you, if you can underline one word in the text that really creates that imagery and then zoom in on that one word. So like I did with nest. So nest would be the imagery. In order for me to be precise, I consider that as the image. I really focus on that word. Um, so I think about, okay, what do I associate with a nest? Why has a nest been used here? What does nest suggest about the fire? What does nest suggest about the relationship between the man and the fire? So that's how you ensure that you're being precise when you're talking about your imagery. So you're not rambling, you're not kind of going off on a tangent, you're really focused on that one word that creates the imagery or those two words that creates the imagery. So you're not talking about an entire sentence generally, you really are honing in on that one piece of imagery. And the last thing here, clear evidence that the candidate understands how language works. So how do the, do the words used um, impact on the meaning? What is the meaning that they create? How do words work together? Um, and again, how does the language reinforce the message or the meaning or the atmosphere of the tone of that particular paragraph? So here is um, part of an example answer. So I've just got part A for you here. So it's just, um, so just do know this is only half of the answer. So this is just for uh, paragraph three and it's the intense cold. Now you should recognize these here. So I just, um, these are the, the notes that I made um, on the text. So they, they would be your notes on the actual text in the exam. And I put them here just so that you can see how I've used them. So I use them myself. I used these and I used the overview when I was kind of slotting everything together into sentences and you'll be able to see that as I go through the answer with you. So just to remind you here, this is the structure that I have followed. 
and also I had these guiding questions as well um, just to kind of really prompt me if I get stuck or it kind of helps me develop further. So the first thing obviously what is shown and what is described so you see that um, that's the first thing I've done in every case so I've, I've highlighted or I've made red wherever I've just said okay this is what I see this is what I understand is being presented to me so I've got shows or described described you could have presented it depends which which suits you um, and then we think about what the words mean and what's being suggested so again I've put in purple here whenever I've, I've talked about the connotations and then when I have focused on the image and this is when you think about what's being highlighted or what's being reinforced to you um, or what's being emphasized for example and these are the bits in green so you can just see how I've just slowly gone through the structure here to build it up from what I'm what's shown to me through the language and then I go to the image so you just start with um, your the quotation that you've you selected so again this is not a literature essay so we don't need a point sentence and we don't need to embed the quotations um, it's it, the structure is much simpler than that so you just want to get to the point as quickly as you can maybe you only have about 15 minutes to write your answer so we have the overview here and then we've got my first example numbing fingers the word numbing shows that there is no feeling in his fingers so I've zoomed in on the word here and I've shown that I understand what it means here within the context this suggests, so again, now I'm thinking about what the paragraph is about and what the writer is trying to show me through this word, through this image. This suggests that he's losing warmth and control as the frost sets to work on his exposed flesh. The image of him losing feeling and function in his fingers further reinforces how unprepared he is for this kind of weather and also how quickly such extreme cold can take hold. So notice how I've explained the image but then I've gone back to the, the paragraph as a whole this idea of him struggling against such extreme cold. Frost had bitten. The word bitten, so again this is what I believe creates the image, this is what I want to focus on, I want to show the examiner that I'm being very precise here. The word bitten describes a physical and painful effect the cold has had on him. The personification suggests that he's been attacked or wounded by the cold and positions the cold as a predator. So notice how I have identified a technique here, I've noticed it um, and by me labelling it here and being able to talk about it I have enhanced what I want to say. So again only talk about a technique if you think it enhances your discussion of the imagery. Um, you won't get any marks just for tagging it on there. So I've really taken it further, I've really thought about what is suggested, what is the image I have in my mind. Um, and again, do, just think about it yourself and try and picture these different things in your head. The idea of the cold is biting him, what usually bites you? Um, take it that far, think about all the associations you have with that word and then think, okay, well, I, I think of an animal, I think of something being attacked, I think of predators, and then see if you can put all that into a sentence. This also reinforces the idea that the cold is vicious or feral, which adds to, adds to his struggle to survive and reveals a sense of danger to the reader. So again, I've, I've used what I've got here in the overview to help me develop my analysis here. And I've also thought about the effect on the reader. So it reveals a sense of danger to the reader. So that's what the image of Bitten really does. And my final choice for paragraph three, Miniature Glacier. The cold is described as having formed a mound of ice on his face. The use of glacier describes how his face is now reflecting the icy landscape around him and suggests that it is now becoming a part of him. So I've really focused on the word that creates the imagery, Th thought to myself, um, what does it look like in my own head? And then, and then said what I think is being described. And then I've said, well, what's suggested? And, and again, ask yourself these questions. Why? Why would the writer choose the word glacier? Obviously, we get glaciers in a cold environment. He is in a cold environment. So what does that suggest about the man in the environment? What do we know about glaciers? What do they look like? How do they form? How does that then help us to understand why it's been used? So always do a little brainstorm um, about the image before you start to talk about it. The fact that his features now reflect the landscape around him highlights the fact that he's losing his struggle against the cold and is changing shape as his body reacts to the elements. So I've taken that further and really thought about the image and what that image highlights and what it really shows about the man um, and the intense cold in that paragraph. So everything is relevant 
um, to the question and I've definitely used some of the words, phrases or even ideas that I've got in my overview and as you can see all I've done is taken the initial notes that I made on the text and just put them into sentences by using words such as shows, describes, suggests, implies, reinforces, reveals, highlights. So if you just have a list of the vocabulary here that helps you formulate your answer, then all you need to do is use this vocabulary that I've put in different colours and then just slot in the notes that you've already made. So here are my final top tips for you. Do ensure that your choices contain imagery. So if they don't contain imagery, then you will struggle to write up um, a developed response. You will struggle to talk about um, the language that's used. Choose the examples that you understand. So you may really, really like um, some of the language used and you may think, oh, I really, really like this idea of a miniature glacier. It sounds really, really good. But if you didn't understand what a glacier was, for example, then you would really struggle. So do stick to the ones that you understand because you'll find you've got much more to say and what you say will be relevant. Do be mindful of selecting double examples. So for example, we have here, um, this is um, still just part of one sentence. It's not even the full sentence, but you notice that I have selected three different examples here. Fed with the smallest twigs is one example. Cherishing it with the utmost care um, is a second example. Gently nurturing it is a third example. So just because it's one sentence does not mean that that's the one example that you choose. Just, be, just kind of get very good at knowing when you have an image and then when you move on to a different image. So it may be that sometimes you need to make a little note like what's being described in this one, what's being described in this one, are they different? And they are different here, we have three different ones. Once you've found your examples, focus on the word or phrase that creates the imagery and zoom in on it. So quite often there will be one, sometimes as I explained to you with one of mine, there were two that I, th I thought I would talk about together. Keep it simple. It's not a literature essay. You can see from the way I've written up my example, I've just got straight to the point. So there's a lot um, that you would include in a literature essay that just isn't required here. You do not have to name a technique unless it helps you to explain the effect of the imagery created. You won't get marks merely for just showing that you understand that there is personification there or there is sibilance there. Use the question and your own overview as a way of focusing your comments on the language. So if you ever feel that you're drifting a little bit or you're struggling, you can't think of what to say, just have a look back at the question or your overview and that will help to kind of keep you focused and to cement your ideas um, and make sure that they're relevant. So thank you very much for taking part in this lesson. If you haven't already, um, do watch the first lesson, which was how to address question 1F, which is a summary, and do look out for the next lesson, which is on question 3. Thank you very much. Goodbye.